Hello, I'm Valerie Young, board member of Arlington Independent Media. We have been producing conversations with Arlington County candidates so that you can make an intelligent vote. Our next series features candidates for the Arlington County Board. They will be talking with our panel. Karen Bate, founder and CEO, KB Concepts, and the 2022 recipient of the Arlington Women of Vision Award. Saul Reyes, Executive Director, Bugatta. Vivian Williams, Washington Liberty, High School Class of 2023. In this episode, we will be speaking with Jonathan Drumgool. Can you share with us what motivated you to run for county board? Hi, Gary, and thank you all so much for having me. So one of the biggest motivations for running for county board is the importance of just having representation. So currently in Arlington, nearly two out of every five Arlingtonians identify as Latino, yet there's no Latino on the county board. Um, and actually, it's one out of every five Arlingtonians that identify as Latino, actually. Um, two out of every five Arlingtonians identifies as a millennial, with the average age being 35, yet with Katie Crystal stepping down, there won't be a millennial on the county board. And I think most shockingly, 60% of Arlingtonians are renters, yet we don't have the voice of a renter on the county board. So as we're making policies in the best interest of everybody, we really need to have those diverse voices on the board to make sure we're all included. That was one of my biggest motivators to run, to make sure we have those diverse voices as we make community-driven policies. Great. Thank you. So as the youngest generation, my generation is often overlooked, especially given some of us cannot yet vote. However, we will be the next leaders and make the next big decisions. We believe in inclusivity and solving the problems that the older generations could not. How will you help represent and advocate a generation that you, are not, you yourself are not a part of? Yeah, so I have lived experiences being part of that generation where we weren't included. Um, being Latinos, our voices aren't often at the table. Being LGBTQ, our voices are often also excluded from that decision-making process. Um, what I've done both in my professional career, but also my extracurricular activities, as I like to call them, has been going out to various communities, whether that's the Latino community, thanks to my role with the Democratic Latino Organization of Virginia, and reaching out to folks and bringing them into the conversation. I think it's really important that those diverse voices and perspectives are brought into the decision making, you know, apparatus and platforms because otherwise we miss out on opportunities. And like you're saying, you know, even if you don't get to vote, whether that's because of your age or your status, you know, you should still be included in the conversation because those policies are going to affect you. So my goal would be to engage more with those communities that aren't included, that can't vote, um, to make sure that, you know, as those decisions are being made, you're actually included in the process. That's great. And <clears throat> Jonathan, what strategies do you believe are most effective in implementing programs that cater to the diverse economic uh, and racial community in Arlington with a particular focus on supporting the immigrant population? Yeah, so I think it's important that we start actually engaging more with immigrant communities and all communities in Arlington. We have such a diverse community here, but at the same time, we know that the last two census have actually shown that we're becoming less and less diverse. So I really want to implement a strategy where we're going out into those communities, where we're doing more than just saying, hey, we have an open door Monday or a Saturday session, please come to us. That strategy isn't working because we don't have the full breadth and scope of diversity included in that conversation. So I really think we need to be going out into those communities, going out to local businesses, and I think first and foremost, setting a strategy where we say, this is what the county board can do for you. We're not asking for anything from you first. We just want to engage you in the process of the county board and what, what we're here to do and serve. And then slowly but surely begin to include more folks in that decision making process. At the same time, one of the biggest obstacles I see is the committees and boards that advise the county board members. I really want to take a look at the diversity and who's included there, because um, those are the voices that the county board members get to hear on advice and strategy and if you know more diversity, whether that's in terms of age, income, immigrant background, aren't as part of those boards and commissions, then we're missing out on that rich knowledge and therefore policies that get implemented don't include those voices. Excellent. In 2020, during the peaceful protests that followed the murder of George Floyd on video by police, the Arlington County Police was called to action by the former police chief to protect the president while he made disparaging remarks about the protesters. How do you plan to ensure ACPD has clear guidelines against racial and economic bias while they still uh, fulfill their mission to keep us safe? Yeah, so I think that's, you know, something we need to take a closer look at is what sort of strategies we're implementing within our police force, really within all of our security forces here in the county. Are they getting the right kind of cultural training? Um, it's not enough to say, hey, we have Latinos, we have people of color here. 
but have you engaged with them? Have you engaged with them in their language, in a space where it makes that community feel safe? So I think we really need to expand kind of what those um, civic engagement opportunities exist between whether that's the police force, whether that's firefighters, and communities that have often been excluded from those conversations. We gotta rebuild trust, and that's with the police force, that's also with the county board and saying, we're really here to look out for you. Um, at the same time, you know, because Arlington is that close to DC, we sometimes get called into those um, kind of situations, especially during the last four years of that administration. Um, so it's something that we gotta take a look on. We gotta really prioritize what's happening here in the county first and foremost, um, but making sure that we're being think smarter about how we are just kind of using whether that's police or other security infrastructures around the county. Thank you. So a topic that is not only important in Arlington, but on a global level is climate change. How do you plan to approach your role on the county board through the lens of climate change? Yeah, thank you for that question. You know, I'm part of a generation that ever since I came to this country, all I've heard about is the impact of climate change. When I was in the first grade and I ran for student uh, class president there in my first grade classroom, the policy I implemented was just bringing a recycling bin into our first grade classroom. Because I thought from that early age that it was so important that we're prioritizing climate. So as we look at policies here in the county, I think regardless of whether it's housing or business, we need to also remember that climate goes hand in hand with that. Um, some of my priorities are speeding up the electrification of our public bus system, um, making sure that's also accessible, reliable, and efficient across the county, not just in certain jurisdictions. I wanna push it as far as also looking at making it free. We want people to use public transportation. You know, I think it's a third of our greenhouse gas emissions from Arlington come from private vehicles. So if we start to make our public transportation system more accessible, reliable, but also green, that's going to help cut those emissions. At the same time, looking at our buildings, how can we make sure those are also built with technology that is going to be environmentally friendly and expanding our electric vehicle chargers across the county. Too many of them are either located in private buildings such as apartments or behind expensive paywalls. And so if we want to incentivize everybody in the county to you know, transfer over to an electric vehicle, we really have to make sure that they're accessible across the entire county, not just where we think they're going to be you know, actively used, but in areas where we hope that people will actually have an uptake in terms of electric vehicle charging. Yeah. And Jonathan, you mentioned that <clears throat> over 60% of Arlingtonians are renters and affordable housing is key to preserving community. Um, and we know that the county has been implementing the affordable housing investment uh, or master plan by investing record amounts in the affordable housing investment fund, uh, the housing grants program, and in eviction prevention. With the recent acquisition of Barcroft Apartments, what strategies would you use to provide housing to Barcroft residents who are below the 30% of the area median income? And do you have any suggestions on how we can make more affordability at Barcroft? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, you know, what's been happening at Barcroft has really hit home and just seeing so many people that look like me and that, you know, ex have experienced similar stories like me being pushed out of their homes and hearing those stories of saying, I don't know if I can continue to live in Arlington. Mm -hmm. Something that we hear in Barcroft, something that we're hearing across South Arlington. So we really need to prioritize affordable housing. I'm all for expanding housing options here in the county, but I really want us to take a look at how we're gonna make sure it's affordable. And it is, to your point again, especially at that 30% AMI level, we, we need to do more. We need to do more by investing in whatever resources we have across the county. We also need to make that process more transparent. Um, I was at Barcroft Apartments listening to the community, just not, not there to campaign, not there to share anything about me, but really to listen to um, some of the challenges that were coming up with the rent changes and with the uh, way that the renewal process was taking place. A lot of them were just saying, I don't have access to this information. They told me, go find it online. And they're saying, I don't have access to that and have the ability to get online or the know-how to, to get that information. They just wanted a printed copy of what that new lease was going to be, but they were struggling to get that. Um, so I think just transparency specifically with the way the Barcroft apartment process was going um, is one aspect of it, but really expanding that transparency to all of the processes of the county board, especially as it comes to housing. We also can do more in making sure that information is accessible in multiple languages. Mm -hmm. Too many times I'm on the county board website and I'm like, let me check out what this information looks like in Spanish. And I start going through the links and then unfortunately either the link is broken or it takes me to a Google translated page and I'm like, this is incorrect or it takes me to a page that's in English. 
I'm like, if I don't have access to, you know, a, another language and I really need to find this information, especially when it comes to housing, something that is so impactful to so many in our community, that information needs to be accessible. So when it comes to Barcroft, when it comes to, you know, ho affordable housing across the county, we really need to increase that process. Um, and I keep saying across the county because I want to see affordable housing, not just in the areas where people think, oh, this community needs affordable housing. No, we need affordable housing across Arlington because too many folks are burdened by what they're paying in rent, what, by the, what they're paying their mortgage, and concerned about whether or not they're going to be able to call Arlington home in the long run. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.